his cab the other oh my god look at this i'm working colin <laughs> you i'm working this morning talk about trolling people so now that this is <laughs> this is drew bledsoe's winery which is a stunning facility you've been in the wine business for how long drew uh 13 years now started in 07 if you can believe that it now, seems like yesterday but yeah i'm, I'm kind of an old old dude in the wine industry and, now and you weren't you didn't get into be a celebrity wine like this is a highly rated wine you in fact you told me the first seven eight years you didn't make a penny right yeah no no it's it's uh yeah it took us seven years before we started uh, making any money at it but uh we've got our own vineyards we've got our own facility uh, we've got our own farming company i mean we're, we're kind of a we're kind of a, a real thing now and uh and thankfully we've got it a an amazing team that's uh, kicking butt for us and making great wine year after year. Uh, uh, you know, it's kind of like playing quarterback. All those guys do the hard work, and then I get to stand. <laughs> so, you know, it's it's, it's kind of cool. Yeah, double back, by the way, is the name of the wine. Okay, um, so I want to talk about the adjustment period for New England, and this is not a shot at New England, but I said this was an organization that had a couple of Super Bowls, but they had a losing record going into Brady. He created this sort of unique kind of vision of what the franchise is and i think it's going to be a real adjustment period not just football tommy but leadership tommy i'd like you to address those thoughts 100 percent. it's going to be a huge adjustment um you know tom and, and it's kind of funny call me think about it you and i are a little bit older but but for some of these kids that have been drafted the last four or five years tom brady has been football to them since they started watching football. I mean, he's there 20 years and you got guys that come in the building that are 21 or 22. They've never seen an NFL game or an NFL season where Tom Brady wasn't like the marquee, you know, quarterback. Uh, and so just the fact that he's there and walks into the room with some of these young guys, all of a sudden everything takes on a, a whole different level of, uh, of seriousness. And then on top of that, you know, his work ethic, which is, with his, which is, you know, well known and, and that leadership that he supplied, uh, and not having that there, it's a big, big change to that organization. They're going to have to be some uh, some guys that step into that leadership void um, and really try to carry that 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 load, um, you know, for the Patriots. And then, you know, I, I do think though that with Jarrett Stidham, who I you know I think is going to be a good player, um, but you also you go back and you remember, you know, Tom's first few years, this wasn't the aerial circus where they're throwing it forty or fifty times a game. The first first few years that he was starting, you know, they're playing defense, they're running the ball, and, and they're taking care of him, not putting him, uh, not putting a, an undue share of the burden on him to carry the load like he did later in his career. And I think that'll be the case with, uh, with Stidham as well. Early on, I think they'll take some of the burden off of him uh, and, uh, to, you know, try to make things easy for him early. And then if he shows that he can carry that load, then they'll give him more going down the road. But it's, you're right. It's going to be a big adjustment for everybody. Even if it's just a fan, it's going to be different, right? <laughs> you know, to watch the Patriots, you have somebody else playing quarterback. Uh, for the first time in 20 years is pretty crazy. It's interesting. I, I think Tom's going to flourish in Tampa, but here is my only concern. It is very easy to find a guy that's intense. Tom Coughlin comes to mind. Take a really intense guy and tell him to chill out a little. It's different to take a very relaxed, chill guy and tell him, you need to be intense. New England is the epicenter of intense football. Tampa Bay, Ebor City, Cocktails at Five has always been sort of a loose, fun organization. Tommy's going to take that intensity. Could it be problematic that it, it takes a while for everybody to understand that you live in the facility for four months? You know, well, first of all, you know, the, there are these different cities where, where, where uh, these teams exist. And Boston is maybe the most intense, not just football, but sports in general. I had to learn that. I came from a little small town in eastern Washington. All of a sudden, I get slammed into Boston, you know, where uh, sports is religion. You know, out here it was, you know, sort of something you did if you, nothing else was going on. Out there, it's, they live and breathe it. So the city, you know, that's different. But if you're playing a professional sport, and especially if you're playing football, if you're not showing up to every single day with great intensity, uh, ready to ready to work hard, bang heads, you know, all of those things, um, then you're in the wrong profession. So let's start there. But then with Tom, he brings so much credibility, um, you know, to that organization that he's immediately going to elevate that within within the building. Uh, what they do when they leave the facility might be a little different. You know, leave the facility and go to the beach. That sounds pretty good. I never got to do that. You know, I <laughs> it was a Buffalo. Got to go to Dallas, so at least it was warm. Uh, but uh, but once you're in the building, uh, you better have that intensity already. And then with uh, with the credibility and the work ethic and all the things that, that Tom brings, I think it's uh, it's going to uh, elevate things for them uh, right away.
I want to talk about Baker Mayfield. You were on a Zoom call last week, and everybody thinks I hate Baker. I've said he's a franchise quarterback. He's not. He probably wouldn't be a guy I'd put my arms around, but he's got talent. And I did think he was – I thought the coaching situation last year was not good enough at the NFL level. I just didn't think it worked. I do think he's going to have a very solid year. But again, I think his ceiling is much lower than a lot of other people. So you're on the Zoom call. Why were you invited, and what did you make of it? So uh, their coordinator for Cleveland, for the Browns, uh, Alex Van Pelt, uh, he was a backup quarterback with me in Buffalo for a couple of years. We were also drafted the same year. This this is a good story. I won't take up much time, but uh, I turned 21 at the scouting combine, right? And Alex was drafted the same year. He's a couple of years older. So my 21st birthday was in Indianapolis at uh, the uh, Hooters in, uh, in down <laughs> Indianapolis with Alex Van Pelt and Gino Toretta. So Alex and I go way, way back. Okay. So, uh, but um so Alex invited me to come sit in their Zoom meeting. We talked a little bit of football. He wanted me to talk some red zone stuff with him. And then he wanted me to talk a little media stuff with him. But then the rest of it was just telling a lot of old war stories. But one of the things that Baker has going for him, though, is that Alex Van Pelt is an outstanding football coach, not only X's and O's wise, but he played the position for a long time. Uh, and I tell him I give him great respect because he played quarterback in the NFL for like 10 or 11 years with really not very much talent. <laughs> I'd like to remind him of that. I do think he's kind of proud of it because he, you know, yeah. kind of a short guy that couldn't throw real hard, but he played for 11 years. <laughs> uh, but uh, one of the one of the great assets that Baker is going to have, though, is he's got a guy that's calling plays for him that not only understands the X's and O's, but he understands everything else that goes into playing quarterback. You know, Alex was uh, he was in uh, uh, Buffalo with Jim Kelly. Uh, and then he went through the Flutie and Rob Johnson years, and then we were together for a little while. Um, he's seen the ups and downs of playing quarterback in the NFL. He knows how to help a quarterback. He was really helpful for me just as a back of quarterback. He was almost a coach on the sidelines. So that's going to be a big asset for Baker going forward. And I also think they've upgraded their offensive line. They've, they've done some good things in the offseason to, uh, to build from the inside out. You know, a year ago, we got all excited because they had all the bells and whistles and all the fast guys and all that stuff. But you and I both know that, that true football organizations are built from the inside out, and they address some of that with their offensive line. Um, I think he's going to have a really good year. I think, uh, um, you know, you, you, I know you follow him on so He's the only one you follow on social media. Did I hear the, that? That's he, I, I follow, you follow my social media. I spend a lot of time on it, Colin. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You, you got to follow me. Come on, bud. <laughs> uh, but but uh, I, I, I think Baker's going to be really successful. I think he's going to surprise a lot of people. By the way, so do you have a camera guy there, or is this your own phone? No, this is actually a camera. I'm at the I'm at the uh, winery. We've been doing so much Zoom stuff now, like everybody else. We we decided to get a little more professional uh, here. Last time I was down in the cellar, cellar today, it's so beautiful out. I figured I should sit outside and drink some wine while I talk to you. So it's called Double Back Winery. It is the cab is what what are you drinking right there? It is great wine. This is uh, 2017 Double Back Cab. Um, it's the best wine we've made so far. Although the stuff that's in the cellar may be better. Uh, from 18. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, our, we, our team is continuing to get better and better at everything they're doing. And, you know, we've, we've made some good wines in the past, but I think our best wines are still ahead of us, which is pretty exciting to say. All right. One more question. Dak got franchise tag. Now he still has a month to work in a contract, but I do oh. think here's my, here's my theory on this. If McCarthy wanted to give him four years, McCarthy would go to Jerry and say, if he was Patrick Mahomes, you'd be like, get him a four year deal. Let's lock him up. Is it possible McCarthy just doesn't know him and is a little reluctant on getting tied to him for his entire Dallas contract. You know, that's possible. I think there's a, there's a component where they may want to date for a little bit before they get married, if you will. Um, you know, rather than uh, going into an arranged marriage and, uh, you know, seeing if it works. Um, I do like this move for Dak signing the franchise tag. First of all, you know, these, these rookie contracts in the NFL, they're, they're, I mean, it's millions of dollars, but it's not, forever millions of dollars, but, you know, franchise tags, 30 million, I think now, you know, so this is not chump change. So for Dak, it's a good, puts him in a, uh, in a situation where he's going to be financially secure uh, going forward. It also gives him some, some negotiating leverage with, with the, uh, with the Cowboys. But I think for both the quarterback and the franchise, it makes sense to get something done long-term gives you more salary cap room, gives stability. Um, I, I really am hopeful both for the franchise, you know, if I was, putting on my Cowboys fan hat, I would be hopeful for the franchise that they would get a long-term deal done. 
And I really like Dak. I really, really do. I think he's a very good player. And then all of the intangibles are off the charts. You know, leadership, availability, durability, um, you know, all of those things. I, I, I think the, uh, the Cowboys would be smart to lock him up, and, and I hope it happens for him. All right, double back winery. we got to make this a habit. This is, this is from now on, this is where I want to do my interviews from. This is beautiful. Can yeah, absolutely. Next time I'll, I'll send you some wine. We can have some wine together. You know, I, I did this this piece with Jeremy Schapp and uh, uh, his producer was pretty funny because we drank an entire bottle of wine during the interview and the the the, uh, the producers were like, yeah, I didn't know if uh, Jeremy was going to make it through the rest of the interview. So <laughs> he lower his chair. So, you know, I, I um, maybe uh, get some, I send some rosé down for joy and I'll send you some cab and uh, we can get loose and have a real interview. That's right. Jeremy's a little bit of a lightweight. I can handle my red wine. Not that like Jeremy. <laughs> Good seeing you, buddy. Yeah, thank you, Colin. Good to see you, bud. All right, it's called Double Back, the 2017's award-winning. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.